welcome to Holiday Horror Reviews. I'm the ghostess of Christmas past, and nothing says tis the season to me like watching something spooky. Throughout December, I'll be reviewing films that put the axe in Xmas. Now let's all go back to 2015, where we'll be reviewing Krampus. First, a history lesson. If you haven't heard of the European anti-Santa, then where have you been? This is the man who handles the naughty list, and on December 5th, while old St. Nick stuffs stockings, Krampus kicks some ass. Depending on what region you're looking at, Grus von Krampus either gives children coal, beats them with whips, brambles, or chains, drowns them, eats them, or throws them into his bag and takes them back when he leaves. You leave Santa cookies, you leave this guy schnapps. It's like something born out of the mind of a cynical Christmas Scrooge. According to my research, <clears throat> The legend actually springs from the 16th century, when Moors were raiding European villages and kidnapping people for the Barbary slave trade. So it seemed that fears of a darker-skinned man stealing you away during the night morphed into a black-faced demon that punished wicked souls by dragging them to hell. Once Christianity was introduced to the Alpine region, they tied Saint Nick into the pagan beliefs and made the gift-giver the ying to Krampus's yang. Oh, and when I say blackface, I mean this can get a little minstrel show, especially in variations like Black Peter, so be forewarned when doing research of your own. And he can also be a little rapey, so at least there's something for everyone. Some identify art director and graphic designer Monte Beauchamp as the man who got Krampus's groove back after he stumbled upon a 19th century postcard collection prominently featuring the creature and had them published in his magazine. Since then, the Goat Man has taken Christmas by storm, starring in TV shows, cartoons, books, comic books, t-shirts, toys, and of course, thoroughly embraced by horror movies. And it's not impossible to see why. I, for one, find it hilarious that the old and European bedtime stories are only suitable as horror tales by today's standard. And that includes today's feature presentation. So, what's the movie about? A boy, too old to believe in Santa, and he knows it, gets upset how his overly cynical and spiteful family are ruining Christmas, so much so that he wishes in anger for them all to just go away. Unfortunately, his wish comes true in the form of Krampus. Using a mysterious and terrible blizzard, a bag of evil toys and wicked henchmen, the Christmas demon takes away his family members one by one, and the rest must all work together if they want to survive. Writer and director Michael Doherty pays homage to so many different Christmas specials and movies here. There's a little bit of Christmas Vacation, Gremlins, A Little Home Alone, and even some Rankin Bass thrown in. It gives repeated attention to the tradition of gathering around to watch your favorite classics. And the direction does a great job of blending the styles of a family comedy, a heartwarming holiday special, and a horror flick. It also does well mixing horror genres, like home invasion and survival, small creature feature, supernatural, horror comedy, and even demonic. And while it might be dressed up in the body of a monstrous goat man, the heart of this film is surprisingly a morality message about the importance of Christmas spirit. Now, while the popularity of Krampus is largely due to it being embraced ironically, this movie doesn't take on a cynical tone about Christmas that I expected from the trailer. The family members are awful to each other at first, but when the clan is threatened, they will do anything to try to save each other, and that's what this movie is really about. It repeatedly says that Krampus always leaves behind the wisher as a reminder of what happens when hope is lost, when belief is forgotten, and when the Christmas spirit dies. The grandmother initially defines the spirit of Christmas as the willingness to sacrifice for someone else. His three main goals involve punishing pessimism, skepticism, and selfishness. So I was taken aback that, in a film with evil gingerbread men and a girl getting eaten by a jack-in-a-box, there was a heartfelt message about the importance of giving. But was I scared? Nah. It's PG-13, and I got that it was going for that Gremlins mix of horror and family fun, but there was this Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory vibe to most of the deaths that made them never feel permanent and that ruined some of the tension. Especially with the toys. I seriously had Nightmare Before Christmas and Ginger Dead Man flashbacks. 
and I think it would have been scarier overall if the middle hadn't taken such a stark turn toward the goofy. The first attack, when the oldest daughter is being chased by Krampus through the neighborhood and takes shelter under the car, and you don't see the jack out of its box yet, all of that is really creepy. It shows you very little, so your imagination fills in the blanks, and that makes the fear realer in your mind. There's a lot of good build-up in the beginning, when the storm first hits, when they first venture outside, and right before you actually see the evil toys while they're just searching the attic. But once everything's out in the open, it kills a lot of what it had going for it. Even though I didn't think it was laugh-out-loud funny, I did like that it had a sense of humor. Krampus had a creepy design, but I almost feel like they didn't do enough with the few moments he's actually on screen. The last third of the movie felt extremely rushed, but I dug the ending that was both sweet and cold-hearted at the same time. I definitely recommend you add it to your Christmas horror collection, and I'll likely give the inevitable sequel a watch. 6 out of 10, Christmas Spookies. If you enjoyed this holiday horror review, please like, share, and subscribe. Haunt me at The Ghostess on Twitter, and read more of my thoughts on the movie at theghostessreviews.com. Boo for now!